Hey everybody, this is my 125 gallon tank and I recently discovered I have an outbreak of ick in this tank. I'm pretty sure I know where it came from or how I got it in here. Uh, that's not going to be the topic of this video. We are going to talk about that in the very near future in another video. But today I just wanted to make a few uh, points here about what we're looking at with this ick. You can see my catfish here has some of it. I know that it sort of washes out in all that bright light and it's hard to identify the spots. Um, some of my Congo Tetras have it pretty badly and then my Tenopoma here has it the worst. I mean you can just see it's on its eyeballs, it's all over its fins, it's on the skin and scales. So the Tenopoma is by far the most infected. Uh, both my loaches, the smaller one here in particular, is now showing signs of a pretty heavy infestation as well. And I'm unfortunately going to have to look at this for a few days because of the way the life cycle of ick works. I've just come in here to apply more medication to the tank, but we're not going to start seeing any changes until the ick moves on through two more stages of its life cycle. Now what I mean by that is the reason we see these little white specks all over the fish, these two Congos over here have them pretty badly too, you can see that one back there. Uh, has it pretty bad. I know again it's hard to tell when they're at a little bit of a distance but once they get up close uh, this one right here, the small one, has a pretty good amount of it. It's female. But the way the life cycle works is that there's a parasite in the water that gets on the animal's skin and burrows into the skin. And once it's burrowed into the skin, the fish's body begins encapsulating it in tough connective tissue. It basically forms a cyst around the little, little creepy crawly, little bug we'll call it, that burrows down underneath the skin. It's an irritant, so the body tries to encapsulate it, much the way an oyster creates a pearl. So, at some point... The little critters have eaten their fill, they've gotten large enough that it's now time to multiply. At that point, they erupt out of the skin and they fall to the bottom of the tank. And once they're on the bottom of the tank, they attach themselves to a handy piece of substrate or gravel or something. And then they encapsulate themselves in a tough material that creates like sort of a, a casing or a cocoon. And then the real reproduction begins. Now, most protozoa, which is what the ick is, it's a protozoan parasite, and most protozoa multiply simply by simple division. One turns into two. Uh, when those two are then ready to multiply, those two will each turn into two again, and you'll end up with four. Uh, those four will each divide into two, and you'll get eight, etc. These don't do it that way. These actually, in these little cocoons they build for themselves, just begin multiplying rapidly. And within a few days, their numbers reach hundreds or even thousands in these little capsules, and then they break free. And when they break free, they swim out into the water column and they swim out looking for new hosts. When they find fish, they land on them, they burrow into the skin, and the whole process starts all over again. So what we're looking at with these little white specks is the fish's tissue that has created these little cysts in order to shield the fish's body from the little creepy crawly that's under the skin. So that's what those white specks are. When the, the creepy crawlies are in those white specks and when they subsequently fall to the bottom of the tank and get attached to the rocks and they re-encapsulate themselves, both of those periods of the life cycle the ick is impervious to medication. If you're heating, if you're treating with heat and temperature, it's a little bit different. I'm not going to get into that now. But they are impervious to medication when they are in the form we're seeing here and when they're on the bottom breeding. It is only in that brief period when they burst free from their little egg sacs, we'll call them. It's not really what they are, but we can call them that for simplicity's sake. When they burst forth from those little egg sacs on the bottom and they get out into the water column and they start swimming around looking for new hosts, then and only then are they vulnerable to the medications we're putting in the tank. So I've been treating the tank for a couple days now and yet we still see these little white specks. I fully expected that. 
we're going to have to let them finish doing their, what they're doing. They're in there feeding off of the fish, and there's nothing I can do about that just yet. When they're done, and they erupt out of the fish and fall to the bottom of the tank, the fish will be okay. It'll have little teeny tiny minor wounds all over it where all these little open sores are. Um, but barring any secondary infection, the fish will be okay. They'll get out of the fish's body. They'll fall to the floor of the tank. Again, they will still be impervious to the medication, but they will no longer be in the fish. After several days of being on the bottom of the tank, they will then break loose and become free swimming, and then they will start dying off once they become free swimming and they get out into the tank where I've got the medication in the water. So the fact that I'm not seeing any change in the fish, even though I've been treating for a couple days now, is not alarming me. If four or five days goes by and I don't see any change, or it gets worse, then I will have to start thinking about maybe doing something different because the meds I'm using uh, aren't cutting it. Now, I've used these meds before. I'm using an all-natural product called Ick Attack. I've used it successfully on several different occasions. I've never had a problem. So I'm basically just sitting here waiting for the unpleasant duration of how long my fish are going to be covered with these white spots. Once these white spots go away, I will still need to continue treating the tank for several days after that, at least four or five days after that. Uh, it's critical. Just because they've gotten out of the fish does not mean you're killing them off. It's still in a protected state for, depending on the tank temperature, uh, that could be up to weeks. If you've got a very low tank temperature, it could take up to five weeks for one life cycle to occur. Since we are dealing with a tank temperature around 80 degrees, we're looking at three to five days per stage. So three to five days with it in the fish, three to five days with it on the bottom of the tank, and then at this temperature, it'll only have a couple of days to find a new host. In this case, of course, we've got the medication in the tank, so it's never gonna find a new host. But in real world circumstances, at this temperature, any of the little swimmers that don't find a host within a few days die. And then they're dead. That's it. Um, Ick is not a protozoa that can survive without a host animal or a host organism. And so if you've got Ick in a tank, like a quarantine tank, and everything in the tank dies, and it's an empty tank at, let's say, 80 degrees, if you let that tank sit there for a week or two, it's cleared out. There's no more Ick living in that tank. It cannot survive without a host organism. So that's how we're going to break the cycle. I've got to allow the little critters to do their thing. I've got to allow them to feed their fill in my fish. And once they've, you know, eaten their fill and they move on to the next stage, I still won't be treating them, but the fish will be safe at that point. I will still have to continue treating the tank for about another week. I'm going to give it just to be on the safe side. And I have to wait until they actually go into their final free swimming stage where they're looking for new hosts and then and only then will the medication be uh, effective on them so when you read the labels on these things and they tell you to continue treatment for three to five days after you know the last of the white spots are gone that's why they're telling you to do that and it's absolutely critical if you see the white spots are gone and you say oh well i'm not you know this medicine's expensive i'm not wasting any more of it if i don't see any white spots i'll wait till i see them again well you're going to see them again if you stop treatment at that point. You have to continue treatment while they are in that dormant stage or that breeding stage on the bottom of the tank. Again, it's only during that free swimming stage when they're looking for new hosts uh, that you will be able to affect them with medication. Again, heat uh, treatment is a little bit different, but I'm not going to get into that in this video. At any rate, I just wanted to, you know, hop that past everybody and throw that out there because I have been treating this tank for several days now and yet we still see the spots on it. So if anyone was thinking maybe the medication's not working, uh, I just wanted to clear that up that I'm not seeing anything I'm not expecting to see at this point. Uh, if we get past another couple of days and I'm still seeing spots, I'm going to start getting a little more concerned about it. So make sure you're subscribed, and that way you won't miss any of the updates. i got a lot of stuff going on in this tank with the ick. I've also got a lot of stuff going on in my native tank uh, with a bacterial outbreak I had, plus uh, you know feeding the fish and so on and so forth. So again, if you're subscribed, you won't miss any of that. So don't forget this one is my 125-gallon tank.
Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you real soon on the next one.